Um, Mark, before we get on to um, the weekend's game, I want, I want, I'm sure you might be able to give us a word on the passing of Johan Cruyff, which we've heard in the last. I know. Uh, I just, one of the guys asked me. I just found out we had we had training, lunch analysis. I just seen it, but to, to lose a, an icon of the game at 68 years of age is tragic. As someone who appreciates exciting, expansive football and is creating a team in that kind of mould, what do you think that he did for football? I mean, you, you'll have seen him in the flesh, um, I suppose, when you were growing up and you were playing. We were all too young. But how, how did he change football, do you think? I mean, I think from a point of view of his playing performances, first of all, everyone remembers the first Cruyff turn. Was it against Germany? I think you know the right back had to be had to be literally screwed out of the ground. I think after playing against him, but um, you, you it was in awe at what he had just done and the, the technical expertise that he displayed, and then the work he did obviously with Ajax and and the work at Barcelona. You know the the, the plans he put into place and and the base he gave the club. You know eighty five, ninety, early nineties, whatever it may be. I mean those, those those guys there, those plans. You speak to La Masia now, the staff at the school. And that's 32, 33, 34 years in the making. So the role he played in that and the impact he's, he's had is, uh, is incredible. Moving on to um, the, the weekend, we had Lee in there saying we, you don't obviously overanalyse victories and you don't really want to overanalyse the defeat either. Um, I suppose it's just a case of moving on to the next game. But did, did, something, did, did the stark difference between the two halves last week maybe concern you a little bit? Because no, we, the first half was terrific and the second half, obviously, it fell off, didn't it? We watched it up to the hour mark, you know, in total control. And it's right, the saying is, you know, I've just been on a course and, and one of the very wise sentences a guy said, you overanalyse a defeat and you underanalyse your victories. And it's true. You immediately think, investigation, what do we do wrong? And, you know, you do three or four times a normal amount of time. It's wrong to do that. So, you know, you've got to be really clear in your judgment. So the point is, for now, we were in total control. After 20 minutes, we should have been, I think Peter said it, four, five, six out of sight. And we weren't, you know, Barry went around the goalkeeper, Jason just missed, disallowed goal that we know was should have been allowed. So there was a number of, we should have been out of sight, but we weren't. There was a spell of, there was a spell of five minutes where Wes had to make three saves. So we have to look at that and we have looked at it and what can we do better? But like any experience, any team, you hope we learn from your, your mistakes. Does that result give you any concerns given the month that you've got coming up and the number of games and the cup games? Not at all. We're, we're in good shape. You know, it's uh, never want to lose a game of football, never want to drop points. But um, we're in good shape still. The team have trained outstandingly well last week and that was showed the way we started the game against Full Kirk. And again this week, first class today, Really, really pleased with the level of training, the quality in training. We're in good shape. From what you saw, Falkirk, could you expect them to be the team that now finishes second? No, I think Falkirk will be saying that they, they're very keen to get points on the board. I'm sure Hibbs will be saying they're very keen to to, to chase them and, and, and maximise their games in hands. But again, you know, I'm, it's not me to talk about Falkirk and Hibbs, it's about, it's about Rangers. We've got a job to do, another tough game on Saturday, a big eye watch crowd. So just go into the game well prepared and deliver the performance. That's what we have to do. David, we this week said um, you're playing a lot better as a, as a, as a unit um, since the last time you played Team in the South. What, what's the, the reason behind that? What, what do we, you see? We've just grown as a team. It's just literally time. You know, we, we're now an extra four or five weeks into it. Uh, and if we can keep learning as a team, which we have to do, we'll be OK. So it's, it's early days still, but players understanding their movements more, players understanding the timing of rotation more, players taking care of the football and, and, and recognising what, what they're doing. You know, for, for a number of the players, they won't have played this much football before. Young players coming through. Some won't have been in this type of position before. For Kenny Miller and Lee Wallace and those guys, Dean Shields, they've been and done it. But for not young guys, it's new experiences. Uh, so our job is to make sure they're best prepared for it and to relish it, to enjoy it. This is why you play football. You know, there'll be times when you can move clubs and you can be at bottom of leagues and fight and relegation. You have to enjoy these times. Have you been pleased and maybe even a little bit surprised at how well your side has, has dealt with the loss of Martin Waghorn, who, of course, your top goal scorer and such an important player for you, they bounced back well from that? Yeah, we, I think we spoke at the time that is he lost? Of course he is. He scored 28 goals, so it'd be foolish to say otherwise. But the fact is, we had Kenny and Nicky and Harry Forrester and Michael O'Halloran and Barry Mackay and Billy King. So, in terms of attacking op options and impetus, we were in a good place. And Kenny stepped up. Kenny's been outstanding for the for the last few weeks. You know his quality, his movement, his goals, he's contributed first class. But likewise, Michael, and likewise, I say the wide players as well. So we're fortunate. It's a tight squad, but we have options. So they've stepped into the breach and, and they've done really well. 
has there been any further development on Martin's fitness? Yeah, he's he went he went away for a couple of days. He's back. He's if you know Martin, he trains like a demon every day. He's a top professional, desperate to get back. He's in great shape. What we have to make sure we do is get the timing right. So between Martin, our staff here, and the specialist, make sure the timing is, is appropriate. And don't forget, when he's fit, he then has to get fit. Everyone thinks Martin Maghorn's fit, he can go and play 90 minutes. When a player's been out for a period of time, he then have to, to, to gain, regain fitness. So um, he's a few weeks away, but he's in, he's in a good place. Have you, sorry, just quickly, have you started planning for pre-season yet? Frank? Yeah, we have indeed. Is yeah. that that's something you'll do already at this stage? Yeah, pre-season's booked. Um, we, we're going to try and finalise a games programme, but the training camp is booked and um, the players come report back here on June the 18th, so the details are all done, so we, we're getting there. Are you looking to stay close to home? Or? Mm, no. It's a suggestion <laughs> maybe going to America, is that? Yeah, we, we plan to go to North America. And uh, details will come out shortly, I'm sure. But to go away, just to play one game, and um, the focus is on getting fit. It's, it's a training camp, so um, we did the same with Brentford and took them away to North America. Different place, but um, it's important to go somewhere where the players can be challenged, but also take their mind off the fact they're working three times a day. You, at the moment, you've got League Cup fixtures in July. Might change, I suppose, depending on what happens with the Scottish Cup. Would that affect your plans in any no, way? If no, you we've got tried. To the cup to, final or? No, we've tried to to see what happens in terms of that, and appreciate obviously the the gap would be reduced quite dramatically when you make the cup final. But that's not a bad problem to have. So hopefully, we all will cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, just one which, just to, I don't know, if you can say anything. About it. Matthew Knox from Livingston, is he here? Trying Young boy, been on trial. Yeah. He's been in. He was in early in a week when I was away. Um, trained this morning. Did well. So we'll see how things progress, but it's just one of the number of players that, that come through the doors on trial.